In this episode, we will see how we can gate a feature behind an unlocking system. Here I'm choosing to unlock this feature by spending a certain amount of idolians to buy it or purchase it. So we will create a cost and a purchase option. For this unlocking to work properly, we will need to save the state of the feature in data if it is locked or unlocked so that once it is purchased once, it does persist between playing sessions. We will be creating two different views for the second scene based on its unlocking state so that we can switch between one or the other based on the state of the game and the progression of the player. Since we've been gardening in this series and not making architecture plans, there will be collateral damages from the addition of this feature. So we will be fixing that at the end of the episode. So make sure that you do watch the end of the episode as well. So here is our little scene in there. So we're just going to remove that uh, second scene that we have created like this. And we're going to create an entire new one by creating a new scene and saving it. So here we're going to have second scene, which I will save right away. So for some reasons, I actually do want to try having another tab container in there. <laughs> this tab container will be responsible of displaying either the tab 0 for locked or the tab 1 for unlocked. So here we're going to have two different nodes, two control nodes, locked and unlocked. So here we're going to have locked and here we're going to have so by default, there are some behaviors in the tab containers which are not really things we want to see here. Like for example, the tabs. We don't want the player to be able to switch from one tab to another. So we're just going to uncheck the fact that tabs are visible. Also, just to be sure, I will remove the ability to use the tab focus mode so that the player can navigate by using the keyboard. Uh, we don't want the player to be able to navigate. We want the game to force navigation based on specific situations. So here we can just create simple things uh, to make the views uh, a little bit more visual. We're going to create a button, which is going to be the purchase button. So let's have this 32080 as usual. And we're going to have unlock. And do we want to add the cost in there? Yes, let's add the cost manually here. So it's going to be 25 idolians at the moment. And we can add also a label for a little bit of context. So we're going to have this label at the top. And it's going to say locked. Um, hmm. Well, it's going to be title. So it's a second feature, which is not named yet, and it is locked. Maybe we can change the alignment and make it a header large. Okay, cool. As for the unlocked view, we're just going to add a label at the center that says unlocked. Okay. Obviously, we do have to create a script for this scene. So let's do this right away and name this second scene at the moment. Okay. So what we want to do is when we first load the scene, when it is added to the tree and when it is about to get ready, it needs to know whether it should show the locked view or the unlocked view. So this will be in the ready function, okay? So here, when we are ready, we do want to know, and I actually have an idea now that I'm filming this episode, and that's off script, but I think it's going to be interesting. We're going to create a function which is display uh, view like this with an argument which is going to be unlocked as a boolean and by default is going to be false okay and what this 
function will do is that it will take the tab container like this as a tab container it will take its current tab and it will set the value to unlocked so the thing is that booteans can be translated to zero or one when in these two situations here are um, false equals zero and true equal one so because of that if it is unlocked and if it is true that it is unlocked the value is going to be one so it's going to be the second tab and if it is false then the value is going to be zero just to be extra sure, we can cast the type to make sure that we do want the integer value of our boolean here, so that we can display this view properly. So what we want to be able to do here is to know whether we need to show the locked or unlocked. So we will have a line in the game data that will persist between the playing sessions. So we need to create a new line in data that the game will read the first time it opens the scene. So here let's go in data and actually let's create a new data structure. So it's going to be data progression. So here we have data progression, extending resource, and we will have a variable second scene unlocked as a boolean by default equal to false so now all we have to do is to go back in our data object to create a new entry progression so now that this property exists within the data of the game we can assume that this scene here can read it we can add a simple check which is if game ref data progression and second scene unlocked. If it is unlocked, then we want to trigger the display view with the variable true. Otherwise, we want to display view with false. So we should actually be able to test this. It's, ve it's a very good practice to test your features as you are adding them to the game. So here we want to first uh, add our scene to this tab container. So we have the second scene in. And that's pretty much all we have to do. We can run the game, okay? Go to the second scene and we are seeing the locked view. We can't do anything yet, but what we will do is close that, go in our data and change it to true run the game again and see that it is correctly unlocked and it is unlocked okay so this is working fine now what we want to be able to do on this scene is to purchase the unlocking by spending the idolians so we do have a button okay and what we will do is connect this button when the scene is locked if that makes sense so in order to be able to connect the button, we first need a receiving method. So on unlock button first. And we want to do something which we haven't specified yet. So now we will just rename this button, unlock button, and we will make it unique. So that if our game if our feature is locked, we can get this button. So we will have the unlock button as a button and we will get the pressed signal and connect it. So now we do need to create a method that will contain the behavior of trying to unlock the feature. Okay, so we will try to unlock because it will not necessarily work. For example, if we don't have enough idleians, we don't want to unlock it. So here we will try to, let's have this method try to unlock. So first let's take care of when, what we will do when this happens. What we will do is have um, 
a change of idlene. So we'll change our data dot resources dot idleans and we will remove 25 idleans. So we can uh, hard code the cost in this function. We can do that. Or we can bring the cost to the top of the class so that it is easier to maintain. So let's do that right away because it's very quick. We'll create a constant cost equal to 25. And this will be idlean cost to unlock the feature. So here we can use the cost constant instead. Okay, so we remove the idleans, then we change the progression seen unlocked to true because now it is unlocked. Okay. And we display the view with true. So here we display view with the variable true. Okay. So these are the things we want to do when we unlock the scene. However, we have situations where we don't want to unlock the scene. The first situation is if the game data progression second scene unlocked, if it is already equal to true, which can be shortened like this, uh, if it is already unlocked, then we don't want to spend the idleans again. The second thing is that if we actually have not enough idleans, so if they are inferior to 25, then we don't want to do anything you want to return as well. So here are the two cases that we will be checking. Now that we have created this behavior, we can try to unlock when we press the button. Cool. Let's go to our game scene and run this to see how this is going. So we have the feature locked. We can create a few idleans and we can click the button to unlock it. So we can go back here and come back to the unlock feature. So technically it works. And you may have seen that there are two collateral damages uh, from the creation of this scene. The first one is that here we are, let me run the game again. We create some idleans, okay, and we spend them. But when we come back, and this label didn't change because this label only updates when we create idleans with this button. So this is something we'll have to take care of in the future. But there's a quick way to fix this. So it's a quick messy way, but at the moment I just want it to work because it takes time to make videos and I can't be explaining everything at the same time. So this will be fixed on a proper way later. At the moment, We'll just go to our first scene in there. And we will override the process function. So we will find the process function and we will override it. The process function, according to the documentation, is called during the processing step of the main loop. Processing happens at every frame. So what we're going to do is just to update our label every frame. So it's a very messy thing to do because we are dating the label every frame, but it will fix our problem. Let's add a little underscore in front of the variable here to get rid of this little warning. That's why I'm doing that. And we can go back to the testing of our game and try again. So here, We'll create some idleans, go on the second scene, unlock, and we have correctly lost the idleans. We'll see in a future video a better way to manage this by creating a resource interface, but not yet. There's a second problem we have to deal with, 
and it is the basic skin of Godot, which has a panel background on the tab container. So here, when we go on the second scene, the, the background is darker because there are two transparent black backgrounds, which are overlapping one in front of the other. So, what we will do is, again, have a quick fix because theming and skinning takes entire videos. Actually, I already have videos on this channel, which you can find quite easily in the uh, previous idle series, but I'm just going to create a folder for the assets of the game. I will color it in red and I'm going to create themes and then in the themes I will create a new folder which is style box fruit. So let's go in our second scene with the 2D view and more specifically the tab container. Godot uses resources files, the same kind of resources that we used for the data to handle the theme and the visual aspect of the game in some ways. So what we will do is override one of these files, more specifically the panel file in there. We will override it to change the background because here the panel is the background to something different. And that something different is going to be a style box flat like this. And we will simply change the background color to make it fully transparent so that there is no background. That's all we will be doing. Then we will save this file in the new folder we have created, style box flat. And here we will have transparent. Dot res, okay, and this is going to be our file. This is a transparent style box flat, which we apply to our tab container to make sure that the background doesn't show. Okay, so here we have pretty much fixed our two collateral damages at the moment. So we can go from one scene to another with the correct background. We can create idolians, unlock, and they are rightfully gone. Okay, so this is a system that you can adapt to making upgrades, for example. But obviously, oh. it is something that I will be dealing with later in the future, how to make upgrades and how to make it convenient to create upgrades. But yeah, you can take the same principle and apply it to buying upgrades. This is just a, I want to say, one size fits one situation way to have an unlocking of a feature. And technically you can all the time, every time you need to have something locked being a purchase button or whatever, you can create a, a script dedicated to that. It's, it's not a really big problem. Now that we have unlocked this new view, this new scene, by spending a few idolians, we will actually create a feature behind it. I hope, you, I hope it was useful and I will see you in the next episode.